It's great doing a baptism. Is everything straight here? Anything under control? Is my hair flying all directions? The three hairs I have. All right. So this is going to be a relatively short sermon, meaning it's only about an hour, right? Um, I'd like you to put up on the screen, do the double shot here, uh, Parable of the Zacks. Okay, there is something, all of you go, what in the world is this all about, and why is it at church? Well, uh, I'll tell you why it's at church, because there are actually deep things to be learned, and there are things that intersect with the Word of God in many different ways. And Dr. Zeus is one of those. So keep the uh, double action always on the, uh, the live stream. I know that Dr. Zeus Publications is really picky. So we're going to keep everything kind of together. But I'd like you to take a look here. And uh, many of you, it'll be hard to read some of it, but I will read it for you. The day before today, one day, making tracks in the prairie of Prax. I'm sorry, those who are translating, Martha, translating into Spanish is going to be hard on this one. But just tell the story. All right. <laughs> in the prairie of Prax came a north-going Zax and a south-going Zax. All right. Very straightforward, right? And it happened that both of them came to a place where they bumped. There they stood, foot to foot and face to face. You've never had this before in your life, right? Sometimes we do that on the highway. I would not suggest doing that on the highway. So these two Zacks, these two people, and what I love about Dr. Zeus is the great thing about a Zacks is you can't find a Zacks on the earth. They're us. All of us, no matter what color you are, no matter what language you have, no matter how much or how little hair you have, we all can be a Zacks. Let's continue on. Look here now, the north-going Zach said. I say, you are blocking my path. You are right in my way. I'm a north-going Zach, and I always go north. Get out of my way now, and let me go forth. Doesn't sound anything like politics today, does it? No Republican, Democrat, right, left stuff here? Huh? Huh? Even in our Adventist church? You know? Even in just life at school? There's one way of doing things and another. And we all kind of are like Zach's. We all have that same issue in our lives. Even when we say we're open to others, ha <laughs> ha, until it happens to be that that person that we don't like comes along and then all of a sudden we're not, right? Remember, when we point, three fingers are pointing back. That's why I always did this in school. <laughs> oh. Let me go forth. Who's in whose way? Snap the south going, Zax. I always go south making south-going tracks. So you're in my way, and I ask you to move, and let me go south in my south-going groove. Right? So we continue on. Look at him. He looks just like me right there. See him? Right there. He has more hair than me, though. I grow hair down here, but anyway, all right, never mind. <laughs> then the north-going Zax puffed out his chest with pride. I never, he said, take a step to one side, and I'll prove to you that I won't change my ways. 
if I have to keep standing here for 59 days. We all are Zachs, aren't we? Yeah, I know. We like to be self-righteous and say, oh, we're open to everybody. And that's, uh, culturally, that's the way it is today. Oh, we're open to everybody. Unless, of course, you're not open to being open, then you're a problem. See, do uh, you understand? There's always something. There's always some problem in society. And there always will be. This is why I pray for second coming. We can try our best to make this world a utopia, but utopia doesn't exist on this planet until one who understands all and his way moves forward. We all are south going or north going, maybe east going, west going. We're going to get to the east and west for a second. Let's continue to read. And I'll prove to you, yelled the south going Zax, that I can stand here in the prairie of Prax for 59 years. I live by a rule that I learned as a boy back in south going school. Never budge, that's my rule. Never budge in the least. Not an inch to the west. Not an inch to the east. I'd like you to turn. If you have your Bible, turn with me for a second to Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. I'm sorry, Martha, I didn't warn you about this one. But here we are. Matthew chapter 8. This morning as I was thinking over this story, I, I heard east and west. And, and Jesus mentioned it. And those of you who are at my church have heard this before. It's a beautiful text. In Matthew chapter 8, starting with verse 1. Jesus came down from the mountainside, a man with leprosy. And by the way, those with leprosy were not clean. They're the ones that aren't accepted among society, right? And so, a um, man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Jesus reached out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. Then he said, be clean. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone. You know, he had this secret. And, of course, no one ever kept that secret. It's, you know, they go out and blab to everyone the healing happened. And uh, then in verse 3, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and is t suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? A centurion is a soldier, a Roman soldier, an outsider to society and Judaism at the time, during this time. Very much an outsider, a uncircumcised, meaning a non-religious, non-practicing person. They may have had their own religion, but not connected with the temple in Jerusalem. They were outsiders, just like the one with leprosy. And Jesus says... Shall I come and heal him? And the centurion says, Lord, I do not deserve you to even come to, under my roof. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority. And he basically tells Jesus, hey, when I tell people what to do, they do it. So if you say the word, it'll happen. Man, what faith. We don't even do that. We who say we call ourselves by the name of Jesus don't even believe like that. And that man did. So sometimes faith comes from the outside, not just the inside, right? And then Jesus says an amazing thing. Truly, I tell you, but I'll start with verse 10. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to his followers, those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. He just said, I don't find any Seventh-day Adventists with this kind of faith. I don't find any Christians with this kind of faith. That's what he's basically saying. He says, you guys have faith better than we do. And then he says an amazing thing, and we'll get back to the Zacks in a second. He says, verse 11, amen, amen, again in the Greek, again, I say unto you that many will come from the what? The east. The east and the west 
and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Man, when I hear east and west, that's the, you know, the red, yellow, black, brown, white, you know, that, that whole thing. He, they are all are precious in his, what, sight? It's, 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 it's one of those deals where you start realizing God is bigger than just us. But so many times all we see is us. Like narcissists, we stare into the pool of water and become infatuated with our own image in the mirror. But my friend here, he wasn't happy. Not an inch to the west, not an inch to the east. Stay here, not budging I can if it takes you and me, the whole world, to stand still. And stand still they did. They stood there. I don't know how they ate, but they stood there. And it went through. And if you're watching there, you take, take a look there. It's pretty cool, huh? You got it, and it goes right and left, back and forth. The, the weather changes. But you know they stood still, but other things don't stand still. Life continues moving. You know, you might have been in a relationship like this. Am I, you know, maybe with your children, maybe with your parent, maybe with your spouse, maybe, maybe with your people at school that you're with? Have you ever felt yourselves in a standstill? Not want to budge one way or the other. Well, of course the world didn't stand still. The world did grow. And boy, did it ever grow. This is years later as we get the Zacks Pass. In a couple of years, the new highway came through. And they built it right over those two stubborn Zacks. This is a little wake-up call. This is a little Ecclesiastes today. You and I think that what we want is most important. We all think that. And even when we don't think that what we have is, is important, we oftentimes want others to think the same way. We all have stubbornness in us. But, you know, there's stubbornness that's good and stubbornness that's bad. You know, when I, I remember when John and James, uh, both of them, John, stubborn as all get out. You know, he tried to get, my, my son John, he's now pastoring in, in uh, uh, Washington, in Seattle. And he's about to go to seminary. And it was like, it was like that, he goes, oh, dad, you're talking about me again. When, when uh, you know, he tried to, hey, J.D., J.D., look, look. And he's looking like this. He doesn't want to do it. And then you catch his eyes, eyes, eyes to eyes, and then, oh, okay, dad. You know, <laughs> get the attention. James is a little different. James is stubborn as well. But stubbornness is not a bad thing if it's for what's right. I would like you to become stubborn in the ability to work with others and to still insert the gospel into someone else's heart even if they're traveling the opposite direction you are. Kind of, that's kind of what baptism is, isn't it? You know, the word repent, you know what that means? Metanoia in Greek. Metanoia. It means to stop, drop, and roll, basically. It's, it's, it's to, you stop, you change directions, and you move a different way. That's what it is. The Zacks didn't understand repentance at all. And guess what happened to them? They were so very important that no one cared. That's how it is in life, isn't it? We're so stubborn that the world just puts their highway right around us. Here we are. The question is, is who are you? We all, I mentioned at the beginning that you and I, we're all Zacks. But are we willing to learn to work with others, around others, and yet still 
have our core with the gospel in our hearts. Are you with me in that? Who are you? And, and I speak this today. I know I've got young people here, and you're all probably, hopefully you're not sleeping on me. You know what I used to do when I was in Corral? Is I'd put the book in front of my face and then fall asleep. The only problem is the book would fall, and then I would be in trouble, but never mind. The question is, is whether or not, I know you're all Zachs. We're all Zachs in different ways. Maybe we're south going, north going, east going. But the question is, is whether or not you can work with others and convince in some way them to start moving in the direction that Jesus would want us to go. Are you with me on that? So let's be some good Zachs. Holy Zachs. That sound doesn't sound good, I guess. Holy moly. No, holy Zachs. Being ones that are willing to work with others and not always just getting our own way, but learning how to work around others to get about something that God wants in this world. That's called ingenuity. And you know, maybe, just maybe, it's time for all of us to change. See, there they, we got the Zach's past. There they are. As the world goes by... And as everything goes on, we think our issues are the best. We think we're the more awesome of anyone, and everything we say matters. But the question is, is what is our end going to be? Are we going to just stand there and be an icon that everyone looks at and says, man, I don't want to be like that, but he's cool, but I don't want to be like them, right? Or do we want to be somebody that actually makes a difference for something good in the world. You know how hard it is to just do this? You can pass. You know what? I'm calling you all to be better Zachs. And Jesus wants you to be with him, walking the way he asks us to do together. May God bless you all.